is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We just got back from Nova. Uh, we did a Grey Knight run at 6-2 and two, uh, throughout the entire week, and we played eight games, three games on Friday, three games on Saturday, two games on Sunday. We're going to be doing a, I believe, an eight-part video of Nova. We're going to go over each and every match in it. Uh, this will just be a standard start of the video, so you guys don't have to hear me say the same thing eight single times or have me try and repeat the same thing eight single times. So if you guys are new to the channel, appreciate you clicking on the video. There's going to be a lot of different armies to cover and also mainly focusing on the Grey Knights. This is pre-nerf, so by the time you guys see this video, the Thursday update with uh, Games Workshop probably already came out and the points and everything changed. So this was all pre uh, buff hopefully for gray knights uh, and we had a great time in nova everybody who came up to me and, and got dice I, I appreciate you guys you guys are all fucking awesome dirtbags so we also sold a ton, a ton of stuff at nova too so you guys who came up and just bought some stickers and dice and and, and some callous assassins i do also appreciate appreciate you guys uh you, you just seeing people say hey your channel's awesome or i like your videos or i watch your content like that that's such, such a cool feeling it makes me want to keep doing this and go out to major gt so that way i can see people all over the country uh, if not the world so uh we actually had a team usa player at the very end uh, at our last game which i can't wait to talk about uh super fun game so uh we're gonna go over each and every game we're gonna take pictures or we took pictures we're gonna go over each picture uh tactics um what i did good what i could have done better what the opponent did good what he could have done better and kind of what we learned from it also there's one special video that we're going to go over uh it was our against our eldar player which you guys if you guys are in the discord uh you guys heard all about it if you guys are at nova you've heard all about it uh so we're going to be going that as well real quick just before we get into the video uh we still have all of this that wrong thing so we still have all of these things up for sale we sold a bunch of these at nova uh it's all of the stickers <clears throat> provided custom through one of our artists on fiverr uh we also have two uh we have a caldus assassin as well as codias and two colored dice left so we have the silver dice and the green dice they're dirtbag uh, dice they are basically limited edition now uh just because they're almost sold out but any of the stickers are three dollars dice are one dollar each and the caldus and codias are 15 dollars each so if you guys are interested hit me up on discord uh we sent them out uh, all over the world and also the um terrain uh, objectives uh you get to pick any one of these stickers with the dirtbag logo underneath and any color you guys want that's over on the uh, link below so like i said we're gonna get into the video uh leave the comments below what you liked what you didn't like and also what you want to see more of go join the discord and if you guys are patreon you guys get to see all these videos free uh for first on patreon.com one dollar a month get you access five dollars a month if you want to go ham and support us a little bit more over at dirtbags uh ten dollars if you want to get in the competitive scene uh and 25 dollars if you want to be a grandmaster and have us play lists you guys want to see on the tabletop or get any tts games uh with us as well so let's get in the video and uh again one through through eight uh we'll, we'll name it once we come back Oh, cheers. All right, so this is game six. Game six. Game six versus Black Templars. So Black Templars, uh, is this game six or seven? They're all just blending. This is game seven, fuck. All right, so we got game seven, guys. Sorry about that. So game six was Custodes. Game seven is uh, Black Templar. Uh, we are at this point four and two so we're four and two at this point i really wanted to go five and three uh but we're four and two you obviously know we already went six and two so we won the next two games but this game was crazy going into it because when you look at black templar against gray knights i always thought in my head we have a really good black templar player uh sasha in our area i thought they had a four up feel no pain to psychic weapons they don't it's a four up invuln save. So we were playing and I and I kept waiting for him to like roll the field of pains. He never did. So then uh, we keep playing. I'm like, do, do you have a four up field of pain against? He's like, no. I'm like, what do you have against Psycho? He's like, four up invuln save. I was like, are you sure? Like I, I kept questioning him because I never played them before. But I was like, there has to be something you have against me. And I don't care about a four up fucking invuln save. Our, our AP is one. <laughs> like I, I don't care 
about the invuln save. It's like we're, we're gonna whittle you down slowly, uh, so my AP one weapons are gonna kill you w slow. <laughs> so uh, I was shocked. So I was super less uh, passive during the game once I found out and read his rule that he doesn't have a four fatal pain. So that that was super cool. His list, uh, seen these guys played before, he's got the two tanks you can get out and, and shoot and stuff like that. Um, before that rule was cool. We had a unit of uh, Marines with, uh, I'm sorry, the Black Templar character dude, uh, who's really good in combat. He has a big 20 man brick over here with the uh, priest guy, uh, the chaplain guy. Uh, he had a, a whirlwind, which are amazing. If you guys are space marines, you should be running whirlwinds. He had a 10 man terminator brick, um, in deep strike. And he might've had like one or two more squads. So that was his basic list. Uh, he had two blade guard dudes in these squads with the blade champion. Who's super cool for black Templars. Uh, that was one of my first models when I first started the game back in the day, I painted them gold. I don't know why. I think that was the main picture in one of the magazines I had. So. This is the mission. Uh, we got to set up our own objectives in this mission. So uh, I put the first one down. He put the first one down. I was coaching. I, I think he was a. I think he was a newer player, um, and he was tired. I think we both drank a lot uh, <laughs> the night before. I, I have my coffee here because we're playing every game at eight thirty in the morning. So uh, this is just a super chill, relaxed game for both of us. Uh, so he was he was a cool guy to play against. So. Uh, I put down this objective. He put in that objective. I was like, you can, you can put, and he saw me put this one down. Um, so I put it literally right out, barely outside my deployment zone and nine inches away from this one. So that way I can like kind of get both almost every single turn. This is the one where you can only get 10 points for controlling two, uh, and then 15 at the very end. So he did the same exact thing. So if you're not sure how to place objectives or do, uh, um, the terrain if you have player place terrain always copy your opponent so that way if you get on on either side you have the same thing that they have so you don't want to be at an advantage or a disadvantage uh, when it comes to placing uh, objectives or terrain so anytime they place something just fucking place the same thing and if they place one place the fucking same thing on your side and then the last objective just got thrown down on this side over here uh, just so we can kind of like i can keep it on my side and then he's kind of wide open on his side so we then rolled off and I kept this side and then he got that side. So I was able to kind of keep my side objectives and then he was able to get his two objectives. So how we set up deployment, it's completely across here, diagonal. Uh, so we put our purifiers right here to kind of, if he gets onto this objective, I can then just hop out and flame the shit out of everybody. We had our strikes uh, start on both objectives so they can make it sticky. We had our paladins kind of back here and then our interceptors. Again, you want to start every game as if your secondaries were shit. So you're going into every game uh, like you're going to get shitty secondaries. So that's kind of what you have to start off. So we had um, interceptors start at the top there. So if I need them, they can hop up for uh, engage. They can get on the other side. They can hop uh, onto this objective and, and, and do something like you got to make sure that they're getting all the way up to the top protected. So that way they can do the secondaries. Uh, same thing over here. If I can engage, they have to hop over here. Um, cleanse, I have to cleanse there, cleanse there. So like you have to make sure that you're getting the worst secondaries you can on turn one and be, be prepared for that. If you just put all of them in the back, like I used to, you kind of get fucked on secondaries, especially on turn one. So he, he wound up uh, going first. So he kind of just floods the zone. So he put uh, his big ass blob unit up here. He put uh, his guys on this objective over here. Now he has the devout push. So you can actually go, I think, D6 inches or something like that, um, which we vected because I don't want him to keep fucking doing that. So he moved his uh, Rhino tank up. These guys got on the objective with uh, Helbrecht, I think that was his name. Uh, our squads that got picked up was the Paladin squad, the Strike squad, which they were on the stayed on the objective. So they made both these sticky and then they kind of advanced back to block off this uh, top here. The Assassin uh, went up and went back down. Um, the interceptors got picked up and brought back down over here. So they actually came within three inches, I think, to do a secondary. I think we got cleanse. So we cleansed this one. They came down over here to cleanse this one. And then we uh, lined everything up to just shoot the shit out of uh, the squad. If I can kill the squad turn one, it's just one less thing I have to worry about, especially with the character. So 
we delete the squad. <laughs> so uh, they're Marines. So the Marines die, and I found out that the other dude has a two-up save. But when it comes to just all of the purifiers and all the side cannons from everything over here, uh, we just murder everything from the squad. He did a uh, devout push, and he couldn't get that big-ass base on the other side of this little terrain feature over here because if he did then these paladins couldn't shoot at him so i had to make sure the paladins were there in case these guys didn't kill him which is what happened these guys shot at them and then he had one guy left with uh the big dude so he devout pushed so i needed these guys to be in a position where they can finish him off um, if they were originally over here he would have devout pushed this way and then I wouldn't have had line of sight to his uh, his guys, and then he would have lived. So I wouldn't have got any secondary points, and then he would have still had his uh, character on the table. So these guys came up here. We are about, I think, 9 inches or 10 inches away from this unit up here. And this is the first time he played Grey Knights. So he was super nervous about like moving and like all the shenanigans we have with teleporting and all that shit. So he moves up uh, the tanks, gets the guys out of the tanks. Um, we don't uh missed with the with the with the guy moving up so he moved up the guy these guys stayed where they are because they just want to try and make that charge they have free charges uh reroll charges by the way which is awesome he uh brings these guys in uh up here they fail their charge as well so they fail the charge they fail the charge uh, and then these guys move up here and i think they fail the charge <laughs> so he's basically trying to make nine inch charges with rerolls so after all that he basically doesn't make any of the charges so we're able to get max on primary uh and then focus again on secondaries so on his turn we picked up um we moved our interceptors back here so they're kind of chilling behind the wall now i think he killed like three of them so there's only two left our purifier stayed where they are the paladins got picked up and brought back down over here so that way if his terminators do uh get the charge off we can at least be there for the counter charge so um, we might have vected or uh, sigiled there. So I think I think that's what happened. So his rhino moved up and was about to shoot me with a melted gun. So I sigiled and I put them back on my home field objective to prepare for that terminator charge. So if the terminators charge in, I can counter charge because you measure six inches right on the other side of the base. So that way if they make their charge, they have to end within six inches. Uh, so then you can counter charge for either free for the Grandmaster, or you can spend two CP to counter charge over there. So that, that's what I love doing with the Paladins is like preparing for where they put their rapid ingress or kind of bring their terminators in so that when when they come in, they just counter charge and uh, finish them off for wherever the hell they're going. So they probably would be better in combat than we are, but again, they never got into combat. Uh, over here, purifiers are still staying there. Then obviously he, he, he uh, failed the charge over there. So my turn, I picked up my Paladins again because obviously he failed the charge. I picked up my Strikes. Uh, all we have left on my home field objective is my Assassin. Uh, strikes moved over here to try and make this one sticky and keep this on our side. Drago came down and made the charge onto the tank. Uh, and then the Interceptors, two of them hopped up over here, shot uh, this dude and charged him, which was a bad idea. <laughs> I should not have charged this character. Uh, and the Purifiers got picked up and brought down here to try and steal the home field objective. So they came down, I believe, within three inches, just so that way I can put as many shots as I can into this unit over here that was that was there, left the champion, uh, and then we couldn't charge the Rhino, but next turn I would charge the Rhino. So again, we kind of ditched the, the Terminators. Now that they're speed five, they can kind of just chill on this side of the table. I'm not gonna be anywhere near them. Exaction squad came in on the bottom here in case we have to get uh, engaged on all fronts uh we might have actually had bring it down to and uh battle lines so we killed the tank here which got us i think four points for bring it down and that was it so we have sticky sticky controlling that objective he's controlling that one and that one so he keeps getting 10 points but we're honing in on this side of this whole side is my side this is my side of the board that's his little corner up there his turn, he starts moving. So he needs a six to make that advance. He's like 11 inches away. He rolls it and then re-rolls it and rolls it into a six. So he, he got onto my objective with rolling a six and stole this, uh, this sticky objective from me. So good job. There it is, rolling a six. Uh, these guys are still on the backfield objective. Rhinos are kind of scooching up. The champion 
killed me. He then moved up, and I think he had cleanse, so he cleansed that objective. <laughs> There's him rolling a, a six. So this is what happened. He moved up his tank, got the guys out. Uh, they had to get, I think, deploy teleport homers or behind me line or engage something like that. Uh, all staying nine outside nine inches as well because he doesn't want me to teleport away. Drago squad is kind of just chilling, waiting here. These guys are chilling, waiting there. Paladins are chilling, waiting here. Uh, and then we have assassin like, oh shit, what the hell is going on with this objective with the ten terminators right there? So on his turn or at the end of his turn, we move up the terminator or paladin. So we don't um, teleport assault them because we're, we're already close. So we move up the, the paladins. Drago then moves back. Uh, and then we shoot the guys that were down here, and then we make the charge. So both of them get into combat with this tank right here. Uh, we finish off that character. These guys obviously move up, shoot, and charge the rhino, leave it, leaving it on two wounds. The strikes came down here to steal this objective. Uh, so they're OPSEC 1, I believe. So we just needed to come down within 3 to steal our home field objective back. I blocked out my last three strikes so that way they can't get to my home field objective so that was kind of like just move blocking uh the terminators to keep them slow and keep them on their side of the table uh exaction squad moved up assassin and the other assassin came down here over here to kill the uh the character uh that was on the objective um the other exaction squads up here uh, in case i need uh behind me lines or engage or uh deploy teleport homer so I just moved them up there. They're, he wasn't going to get to him. He didn't care about killing them. So I kind of just, they're right there. <laughs> uh, it was early. All right. So it was like nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, these guys are still on the point. Uh, so they're like measuring to see how far his, his fucking YOLO charge would be. Tank fell back. Uh, we spent one CP to get our Drago, I believe, out of dodge. So we spent one CP. Drago misted. We kept our paladins on the point. These guys got out and charged my paladins. Uh, purifiers are still in combat with the tank. The terminators uh, moved up and charged my strikes. These guys are advancing. They rolled, I think, another six. So they're literally advancing to the center of the table. Drago's down here. Uh, he's off the table. So Drago's off the table. I just kind of put him there to wait. And then uh, the next turn, Drago got picked up and put all the way on my backfield objective, just waiting <laughs> in case he does get to me i want to make sure that i have somewhat of a protection on my backfield objective so then these guys are spread out terminators are spread out i have one corner this corner that corner and that corner we finally kill the um whirlwind now what i do and this is smart for great knight players is instead of enclosing on the enemy you kind of just spread out and run away so that's basically what we did the, the purifiers went as far possible on the objective as they possibly could up here in the corner the exaction squad is all the way in the other corner the the terminator with uh, drago is all the way in the back corner as far back as they can and then the uh, other paladins uh, got picked up and dropped back down so that way we can just start shooting the terminators from 24 inches away just to kind of plink down uh, some terminators exaction squad moved up on the point assassin assassin are still alive uh this tank is down to two wounds i think we we wound up killing it Yep, so it's there, and now it's not there. And then this turn, he wants to move up these guys to try and make a YOLO charge into our purifiers to take his home field objective uh, back. So the Terminators, he had secondary, so instead of trying to uh, get into my deployment zone and steal my objective, he had to focus on the secondaries. So he stayed on this objective to do uh, deploy teleport homers, which is in my uh, table quarter, and then extend um, or defend stronghold so he has to take over his backfield objective so he's going for a secondary so he's kind of just practicing so instead of all of his guys in the center he then starts uh moving uh moving them up to the top here so then i think he failed his uh his charge <laughs> so uh, a lot of failed charges this game uh paladins are kind of just chilling there at the end of the game uh, this, this is his role so he had a like a five and a one and then another less than nine charge the uh our last turn we had aerial denial which was pretty easy and then deploy teleport homers so uh assassin came down over here deployed a teleport homer the guys in the center just got picked up and brought back down i spent one cp to come within three inches so super easy turn five for me kind of just put down and just all right got the center now and then over here i deployed teleport homer so it was an easy five five for the last uh turn 
And this is what we ended up with. So the Black Templar player, uh, we had 10, 10, 5, 10. So finished up with 35. And then we had zero on turn one, uh, only two on turn two. Uh, 885. So not, not bad. We had 23 for uh, secondary for the Black Templar, so 68 total. And then for us, we had 15 turn two, only five because he made that six inch fucking advance on my home objective. Uh, so we only had five on that turn, but then we had 15, 15. Uh, and then I think 15. So we, we finished up with 50 uh, on that. And then for primary, we had really, or secondary, really good turn one for 10, 9, 10, 5, 10. So we had 10, 20, 30, 44, max is 40, but 44 for a secondary. So we finished off with 100. Um, so this game was kind of, again, this, this dude, all Tim, awesome. Uh, this game was going into it with black templar i was super cautious just because the four up feel no pain but then realizing that he doesn't have a feel no pain so you kind of basically just playing a marine army uh green knights and the marines i think are the best matchup for us uh we just have stuff to kill three up saves even if it's just bolters people rolling three up saves you have 33 percent chance of just failing their saves and if a lot of them is ap1 ignoring cover or anti-infantry two plus our purifiers are the best ones to kill uh infantry marine models so the purifiers are the best one to kill terminators because then they have three up saves so again 33 percent chance for a terminator to fail their save uh, so you have to protect the purifiers we learned that from our last game against custodius we gave our purifiers up too soon so in this game we were super cautious and making sure we kept them always 12 inches away and they were always the first ones to get uh, out of dodge and when i say get out of dodge i mean mist of demos so anytime we can mist of demos it's always going to be the purifier unit because they're the ones that uh buff up when they when they die and they have flamers which are auto hitting and they have the anti-infantry 2 plus which all of everything we're seeing on the side of the table is anti-infantry 2 plus or anti-infantry all the tanks kind of die just the side cannons so the sigil on the the paladins are amazing uh the grandmaster or brotherhood captain whatever you want to run and then the crow with purify flame uh and the purifiers super good honestly it's going to be in my tournament list uh until we get the codex so uh Really good game, fun opponent. Uh, this is game six, game seven. This is game seven of eight. So last game is super fun. I can't wait to talk about it. But if you guys are new to the channel, definitely, definitely hit the subscribe and notification bell so these videos actually pop up for you guys. Uh, and also Patreons, appreciate you guys. You guys are fucking awesome. Uh, if you guys are interested in the Patreon, all these videos come out first on Patreon. It's a dollar a month just to check that out if you want to support the channel. Five dollars a month if you want to give a little bit more uh, by supporting the channel if you like our content, you like us making videos. And also ten dollars if you're in the competitive play. We go to a lot of tournaments, a lot of GTs. Uh, we help all of our dirtbags out on the competitive scene. If you have any questions, comments, list ideas, tactics, make sure you're getting uh, the most out of it if you are competitive dirtbags. And you get a message me one-on-one -on, -one on Discord. So that's kind of how we go over all the competitive scene uh, if you guys are competitive dirtbags. Grandmasters, you guys are just ballers. Uh, you guys have uh, video suggestions. We get to run list ideas or armies you guys want to see me play against or Mike play against. Uh, and also we can uh, try TTS games or you know go over scenarios on TTS if you guys are cross country uh, or the world. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff you get benefits from being on a Patreon. So you guys are awesome. There's a lot more stuff to come out, especially with the new update. Great Knights are insane. Uh, we Great Knights are more insane now because of the nerf to other people so towering was huge uh devastating wounds was huge because we didn't have mortal wound save to begin with so devastating wounds is the same thing for us it just kills us less so if you have a six damage devastating wound uh, ability now it just kills one guy instead of three of our guys so again all these nerfs are benefits to gray knights and giving us less points we can bring more guys so think about how many hundreds we have in in nova uh we would just have better easier chances to get secondaries with the more units we get to bring my list now just basically added a, a librarian uh with first of the fray and a terminator squad all those points for what we brought to nova crazy i took out the assassin i took out the exaction squads i added uh libby terminator and uh i think a voidsman at arms so similar just way more muscle way more uh 
first of the fray, multiple, all, a lot of shit at it. So granted, it's in a very good position. If you guys like the videos, hit the like, comment, all the fun stuff, head over to Discord, uh, and we'll see you in a really, really fun last game of Nova, game eight. Cannot wait to talk about that game.